Hi, we're going to go over a few basics in Animate. We're working on the Identity Deck Social Justice card, and I'm going to go over some basic things like how to use the Line tool and not the Brush tool for animation best practices, and also how to uh, make sure that we're getting the fills uh, done in the right way. So here goes. I'm in the Social Justice deck. This is the template that I've given to my artists and designers. And I'm going to go to the section that is my section under spades. So I'm going to click right here. I'm the ace of spades. And I would go control click and insert a keyframe. You would alt click on a PC. So uh, now I have a place that I can make my art. Um, this is just a, a, a template, essentially, if you're doing the, uh, the aces, you have to make them in the shape. Um, whereas if you're working on any of the other, the kings, the kings, the diamonds, or the, the face cards, they're going to be the flipped. And that's why we have this, um, this line right here that helps us to get that uh, sort of somewhat symmetrical diagonal. So because I'm going to be doing the ace, I will be able to not work on that diagonal. This um, index, which is an under lock, I can turn this on and off um, as I need. You can arrow these down. Arrowing them down helps you to see other things, like here's the number assembly going on and off, and here's the uh, center suits going on and off, which will be helpful for you as you work to turn those center suits off generally. It's just kind of a reminder of, of where you're at. Okay, so if I turn off that center suit, then I can start to do my drawing. Um, in another tutorial, I was showing you how to import. So here I'm just gonna really show you how we can use the line tool using the pencil to, uh, to, to do some drawing. This is after you have potentially done some of the carving drawing that we already did the other demo for. So just let me show you just really quick this idea of carved drawing. If I um, have a rectangle tool, and uh, I go to my color, and in the line I've got, uh, I want the line to be this dark purple and the fill to be um, the flesh tone that I'm working with for my character. So then basically, um, I says my error message is on the other screen over here, so I'll just pull it over so you can see it. The current layer indexes is either locked or hidden. Uh, would you like to unlock and show this layer? One of the things that that's helping me to know is that I shouldn't be working on this layer. It's, it's, uh, this layer is actually a folder, um, and inside of here is where all of the content is. So where I have it say, art go here, that's really where I want to go. So I'm going to say, would you like to unlock this layer? I'm going to say no to that. I'm going to go back to where it says art goes here. This is the first place that we're going to, to kind of work. Um, so now, with that layer unlocked and all the other layers locked, that's really helpful. I'm going to create just a simple box. This box right now, the way that it's set up is um, the, the line is definitely too thick. I can tell that immediately. One of the things to, to check for is to go into properties. We can go into this line. We can see that the, my stroke is set to 18.75. Uh, so I'm going to check the rules. Um, I believe that I have a four stroke on the um, the items that are in the on the outside. So I'm going to double click on it. That will allow me to get all of my lines. And now I'm going to make this a four. And then I'll click off and you can see that it's a much smaller line. Um, as we're working with line, if I only click one time, I'm just going to get one of them. So I'm going to double click and I get, get that. So right now I'm going to actually check and see what those rules are in uh, the digital imaging to site. Um, on the site uh, for the course content, if we go to the line for the cards, uh, it will say two point for interior lines and four point for exterior lines. Set scaling to normal and fill and stroke panel. So let's take a look at that. How do we set the scaling to normal? This is normal. So that's the scaling. Um, so that's where we want to play with that. I also recommend for this particular project not to um, adjust the, the type of line that we're using. We're really just going to use um, the straight up line. 
So the stroke can be either set to two or four. So if this is an exterior line, I'm gonna make it a four. And um, I can now show you how you can use the pencil tool to make interior lines too. And because I know that that's smoothing, it's getting a much smoother approach. Um, this line, if I hit V, I'll get the line. If I double click, I'll get all the lines, but I wanna get this line, shift click, and this line, and then I can set that to two and then hit return, and then I click off, and you can see that that is an interior line. It's much smaller. It's going to be able to um, be um, adjusted. So let's talk about how you can use the combination of carb drawing and uh, drawing with the actual pen or the pencil. So with carb drawing, you can grab your, your move tool, which is pretty sweet, and kind of make um, shifts in these shapes. You can also then grab your, your uh, direct select um, tool, which is the white arrow tool. A is the shortcut for that. And you can then grab your, your Bezier handles and move these things around. And that really is very helpful as you're trying to get um, really nicely designed shapes. So I'm just kind of playing with some shapes here just so I can express how we can make some um, very simple understandings of, of things. If you do use the brush tool, um, it's really not going to be used at all in this, in this animation um, uh, process that we're showing you now. So I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna click this. I'll show you what, we, what it could be used for. You can see that my size right now is pretty small. So I'll just go bigger. What happens with that is that that has become, that is a shape. So you can see that the points are all the way around it when I'm clicking on the, the white arrow tool. When I click on that, object it is fully around so I, I don't have the amount of the ability to kind of change the line as I need you can see that when I collect one of these points and try to move them around it doesn't change whereas if I collect one of these points and move it around the entire shape changes and I have a lot of flexibility in that way I can also uh, add points to my selection and then move the Bezier handles I can grab my direct select tool and move things this way. So this is a real way that you can manipulate the drawing to do what you need. Um, this is a shape which you can actually add line to by using the line dumper tool. Um, and then once, you're, once you've got line around it uh, with a direct select tool, you can play with it this way. This right now has a ton of points to it. So I would want to like do something like select it and go to the direct select tool. Um, make sure that you have all your panels up. Uh, not necessarily panels, but for example, my tools right now, I'm not seeing all of them. I know that I'm not because I'm not seeing the smooth tool. The smooth tools is a pretty important one. If I click on a line or double click on a line, I can click on this smooth tool and it will smooth it out pretty nicely and try to get less points. So to show you, I'll do the direct select tool and I got a lot less points than what I did before. Um, and then I can alter and change this um, with a lot more uh, affinity towards where it needs to go if I have a, a tracing underneath it. Um, okay, so uh, that's some of the things in terms of line uh, using the pencil tool and the, um, I actually haven't shown you the pen tool, so let me quickly show you the pen tool. Um, I'm going to hold this down and then I get the actual pen tool. If you click on the pen tool, um, you can make shapes. You want to go outside of the roundness and then double click in and kind of pull into it. I didn't actually double click, I just clicked on the, on the point and then I'm moving it through. Um, you can see that I have a, a drawing here. Um, I would hit K for the shortcut and grab um, the dumper tool and dump at this point. When you are dumping, you wanna make sure that you have um, uh, closed large gaps is the one that I would recommend. Um, sometimes this looks like a circle. Um, right now it's in a square because I'm in something that's a little bit more full um, or more rectangular. The other thing to check for is this lock fill is either dark or not dark. It's a little bit hard to tell, but that is, um, that will matter once we get into some of the gradients. So I'll show you with, with a radial gradient, which this is just our standard gradient. I'll just pop that standard gradient into, into this. 
if I do a dump inside of here, it's a linear gradient. I wanted to talk about radial gradient, so I'm going to click that. Um, you can see that wherever I'm putting my cursor, that is kind of locking the center of the fill to the uh, wherever my cursor is. So that is having the lock fill um, at this point. If I go like this, then it's just going to um, it's going to do something really quite different. It's not going to be what you want. So you want that off so that when you lock fill, you'll, you'll get it to act where you want. Now, say these gradients are not really what we want. Maybe this is too, um, too dark in its edges. What you would do is click F is a shortcut, but it's the gradient transform tool right here. Um, what you do is then you get this gradient tool and you can move this around. This cursor helps you to move the highlight point, and this is the size of it. So I often recommend for us to make things more subtle in that way, right? Um, if you have a, an oval, then you can turn it this way. Let's make a really tight oval. You can turn it this way and kind of get this thing to look um, like metal. And I have some simple shapes here, but ultimately uh, the goal is to make something where you've got some gradients that are starting to have make sense, like um, we've got in, in this piece. Um, in a previous demo, I also showed you how to do uh, texture fills with bitmap fills, uh, which will be another helpful thing to add information. Um, so let's say we would like to do one other thing, which is pretty helpful. Um, I'm going to grab my pencil tool, not the brush tool, and I'm going to um, just kind of give a little shape to this. Um, and I recognize, oh, I'm drawing with a gradient tool. I'm going to Command Z that. Um, the pencil tool, I'm going to take us back to the, bl the not black, but the uh, dark purple that is going to be um, my line for my particular piece of art. You can see it's smoothing, which is pretty nice. I guess you can see I've got my smoothing up in properties. It's set to um, kind of medium. If I set it to high, it's going to go um, and really smooth a lot if it sets it to low. If I'm having a lot of coffee, it'll, sh it'll have all those shakes in it. So I'm going to command Z that. With these two lines that I've got now here, I can hit the K tool, which is our dumper tool. It's the paint bucket tool. And I can then choose to have another um, color, and I can hit K and dump in that. And then I can have another color. And we can sort of start to work within, within a range and kind of create cell shading in this way. So I'm going to create a mid-tone here. And this is pretty cool because you actually don't have to now keep your lines. You can take the lines away. If I hit V, uh, I can delete it. That's definitely one way to go. Um, but that just gets one of the lines. So I'm going to Command Z this and show you that if you click, and then if you double click, you're going to get all your lines. So I could delete all the lines that way. And that gets um, a little bit of a nicer shape. Uh, I'm going to Command Z that to show you one other thing, that if I hit E for eraser, and then I go to the tools, make sure that you are seeing all those tools, you can erase lines. So I can go to my eraser section and just erase lines. My, I'm going to hold down brackets to make my shape bigger, or I could go up to size. And it looks like I might be erasing everything. I did erase a little bit of that, but it's the line that I'm erasing. It's not the actual shape. Um, so if you want to work just with shapes, you can uh, use us to get rid of the lines. Uh, and, but the lines are what you used initially to get your shapes, and that's kind of an important part. Um, v selects things, uh, which is the black move tool. Uh, if I did want to go into this shape and alter it with the carving method, you can still do that. You can move this stuff around. Um, I can grab the A tool, which is the direct select tool, um, I can delete points. Again, this is a little bit too bumpy, so I'm just going to come in here and delete these points. Grab this bezier handle and kind of make this a little bit more round. Um, so this is me kind of altering uh, the, the form using line, using dumping. Um, so as you're, as you're working and you've got uh, a shape that you would want to alter, so let's say 
I'm gonna work inside this piece, which you can see a little bit more advanced piece that's more finished. Uh, each one of these are actually symbols or layers on top of each other. Um, so I'm gonna double click into, into his uh, hat. You can see that I'm, I, it's not locked. I've clicked onto the hat. So I'm gonna double click into the hat. This is the fur. Um, maybe I wanna alter this, this fur shape. I could grab this and pull it, right? But you can see that I'm actually, because I've used symbols, it's altering all of those down below to command Z. Um, you're, you might be wondering what happened to his face. It's because this is a symbol that lives underneath uh, this face symbol. So if I wanted to go to the face and alter it, um, because that's on a different layer, I can see what's going on there. So I highly recommend for you guys to create layers for every, every kind of asset that you want to turn and twist and change around. Um, the, uh, the method that I like to talk about is a layered cake. So you've got your bottom piece of cake that, that would be, let me turn some things off so that you can see, like at least for the face, so the eyes, click off. Uh, so I'm going to turn off the eyes, that's one layer. Uh, the hair is another layer, the face is another layer, and the hat is another layer. So those three things are kind of uh, things that I wanted to alter separately and be able to change separately. There's a lot of different colors that are behind that. So if you create a setup uh, with your drawing that has uh, all these layers set up, it will be a more successful piece moving towards the animation processes as well as um, just being able to alter your images as you go. So I'm going to turn the hat back on, the face back on. And you can see that the face for me in this particular piece included the mouth and the nose and uh, I'm gonna put the hair and the eyes. So there's my, my character and it really was just using the process that I was showing you here. Um, let's say I want to get the line back in. I grab the line dumper tool and I click or double click to get that line to go around. Um, so those are some of the techniques that I want you guys to, to use. Um, let's say that you want to make another layer to like if this is the face of somebody then you're going to go up to this new layer and that's where you can uh, do your more line work you can do it with the pencil tool uh, you can um, this this layer now can be called face so i just double clicked and renamed it I'm going to just move this keyframe down so it's on top of it and on top of it only. Um, so now things like the eyes, I can hit K, and uh, which is the dumper tool, and I'll go and get a color that's our print safe color, and I'll dump it into there. I'm going to hit V to click off because it didn't want to grab it, so K, because everything was selected, and I'll click this. Now, you might be wondering, why is why are these not, why can't I fill, why can't I fill? This is a very common thing to wonder. I'm going to click A, and then I'll grab these points, and I need to get, get them connected so that they can fill. Now I can hit K and fill it. So, um, those are some things to understand in terms of some of the basics of working in Animate. And uh, I'd be happy to answer any more questions. Just let me know what your questions are and uh, we'll uh, get you answered. Have fun working in Animate. Remember, this is, this is your canvas. Um, and if you start to work with it, with your layers set up in the right way, it's going to feel a lot uh, better. It's going to feel like you have more control over the image. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what everybody uh, comes up with and uh, keep being creative. Bye.